everybody, it's Sean with The Good Dog, and in our continuing series of do-it-yourself videos, we've got Mac Daddy. Man. And we're going to be doing crate. Uh, a lot of people just think of the crate as just, just get the dog in the crate. Um, we find that there's a lot more value to doing the crate exercise correctly than just stuffing the dog in there or letting him run in or letting him run out. Um, we call this um, part of our leadership exercise trilogy, which is crate, thresholds, and structured walk. Um, we tend to find a lot of value in how we do the crate exercise. So I want to show you that. We're going to work with Mac. Um, if you've seen the other video with thresholds, you know that Mac is kind of a, a softer energy guy. Uh, we just got him today, uh, just under an hour ago. And, uh, but he's a pretty gentle soul. Um, doesn't have a lot of training or anything like that, but he doesn't have a lot of state of mind issues. So, pretty sweet guy. So, that means that how I do the interaction with the crate with him will be dictated by his state of mind. He, if he was really bratty, um, I would be firmer with him in the way that I correct and direct and, and share pressure. Because he's a gentler guy, you're going to see me be doing a, a gentler approach with him to make sure that it, it matches his state of mind and helps him to succeed. So, a lot of people think, well, he wants to walk in the crate. That's great. The more I ask him to wait and listen for me to, to give him direction, the better our relationship gets. The, 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 the more courteous he becomes, the, the less pushy he becomes, the more you really get your relationship kind of smoothed out and in a good gear. So typically when we see dogs that have got problem, problem behaviors, it's because the owners aren't asking very much of them. There's a lot of little conversations going on that they're not tuned into and the dogs are blowing them off in a lot of contexts, which is adding up to a bigger conversation where the dog just disrespects them in totality. So what I'm talking about is little moments here that don't take up hardly any time, the second here, a second there, that can actually impact your relationship, cause your dog to feel totally different about you and give you totally different behavior. So that's the value of this. It ain't just the crate, it's something totally different. So I'm going to bring him over to it, walk him up. I want him to pause right when he gets there. There we go. I didn't ask him to sit. It's great that he does, but I don't want to ask him to sit. So that's a really important part of this is I don't want to spoon feed Mac. I don't want to say, walk up, Mac, sit. Great. I can get to that point down the line, but right now what I want to do is I want him working harder. I want him to be tuned in. I want him to be thinking. Where's Sean at? Sean just stopped. I should probably stop too. I want him working, and I want him to be accountable for where he's at. I don't want him on autopilot. So the more I say, say, do this, do this, do this, especially initially, the easier it is. And right now, I don't necessarily want to make it easier. Um, I want to make it better. So don't give the sick command. Leash is loose. Don't cue him by holding him back. There we go. Great. So I didn't have to give any leash pressure at all. A lot of owners I see will walk up and they'll kind of like hold him back a little bit like that, that's not the conversation I want. I want the dog to be responsible. He walks up, pop the leash, and let him know, I didn't ask you to go in there yet. Nice. Great. Leash pressure. doesn't mean Matt comes out. So that was just a little extra challenge I added in there. You can just shut it, give him a minute, and then open it up and see what you get. 
but I saw he was already giving me a little bit of wine to come out, so I just used that as a moment to practice a few repetitions of shutting the gate, opening it up. And the reason I do it the way I do it is I open the gate and I kind of step back. If you open the gate and you crowd it right here, you're not giving him any chance to, to make a mistake. Um, your, your, body, your body proximity or position is, is pressure that's going to keep him in there. So I don't want to do that. Once again, I want him thinking. I want him accountable. So that's why I open this up. No. 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 Now he's starting to get a little bit more demanding with it. No. So if I start to see more demanding from him, no. the pressure will get a little firmer with this. Now you saw when the pressure got a little firmer, I got a change in behavior. If you keep going soft, like I was talking about in the other video with thresholds, because he's a soft guy, I'm using a softer approach overall. But that doesn't mean that when he fluctuates, I'm not going to give him what he needs, which is in that moment, he started to get a little more like, I know, I want to come out, I really want to come out. And I had to say, no, you really can't come out. And I had to do it with a little bit more pressure to get buy-in from him, which created a state of mind shift and a behavior shift to give me a nice sit down kind of thing. So, just because he's soft, doesn't mean that everything is soft. Look for the moment, what is my dog giving me? If he's pushy, then you have to give him enough pressure for him to get buy-in, uh, so you, got, you can be successful in the moment. So, open this up, stand back, nice courteous moment, let's go. Go full away, go full away. Alright, gonna do it again. Very nice, bud. Star scoop. Bring him over. Pause. Gives me a nice thing. Great. Good boy. So I don't know if you saw that leash pressure, Laura. I don't know if you can see that, but basically taking it, <coughs> excuse me, and off to the side of his head, just saying the word crate. And as I say the word, then I'm guiding him with leash pressure in. Now, if he gave me a lot of struggle, I would just hold the leash pressure until he started to relax and buy in, and then I would relax the leash as he goes in. Now, like I said, one of the exercises I like to do, once he's in there, I stand back. Don't stand back too far. Don't let him blow doors on you and get out. But I stand back and I give him a full opportunity to make a choice. If, once again, if you're doing this, he doesn't have much choice. He's not gonna go anywhere. Don't feel like he doesn't wanna come out. You're actually blocking him. So, give him a chance, the door's open, gives me a nice thing, awesome buddy. Then you can shut it, of course you take your leash and prong collar up. Good. And then you come to get your dog out. Do, 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 do. Open this up. What do you get? No. So you guys see, can you see the learning process, the decisions going on? So a couple times he tried, he tried, gate shut on him, and he goes, ah, I can't get out like that. I guess I gotta stop and wait. Great, so he stops, waits, gives me a curious moment, which is all I'm looking for. Hey buddy, let's go. Good boy, good. Right, let's do it again. Great. Good. Take our prong collar off. Prong collar's off. Stand back. No. No. I don't want the head out like that. No. So I give him the verbal correction and the actual physical consequence of shutting that on him. Now, if I was in my second day of working with him and he was still giving me that, I would be more firm with this. So right now, I'm still being fairly soft with him. He gave me a little more pushiness. I gave him a little more firmness with this. But if we're in the second day and I'm still getting that, I'm probably going to be pretty firm with this right off the bat because I don't want to spoon feed him. I don't want to make it harder for him to be successful by being too soft on him. So you can be too soft and you can be too hard. And you've got to find what's just right for the dog.
Okay, everybody, so that's basically the crate technique that we use. Um, let's see, he's wiped out from all that high energy exercise. Um, hey, buddy. So the crate is about much more than just managing a dog, or what I'm trying to teach you here is about more than just your dog not charging out of the crate. It's about much more than the mayhem involved with opening the crate door and him knocking you down, which we don't want. It's much more about, we definitely don't want that either, but it's much more about making sure we cultivate a state of mind that is a respectful, courteous state of mind. Because if your dog feels like he can come charging out of your crate, and bowl you over, you're going to have problems in other parts of your relationship, other parts of your life together, guaranteed. So don't miss this moment. It's a huge moment, huge opportunity. A lot of dogs are intense about either going in or coming out. Those are your, those are your gateways to behavioral changes with your dog and relationship changes. So this guy isn't super intense about either one. Uh, he's pretty easy to go in and he's a little more eager to come out, but not a lot. So you saw the pressure being pretty mild. But if this guy was gangbusters about going in, there'd be firm pressure to stop that. And if he was gangbusters about coming out, there'd be firm pressure from this to stop that as well. What I'm looking for is just the right amount for the dog to get buy-in, to help him out to move to a better space, get your relationship in a better space. So it ain't just the crate. This is about much more than that. This is part of our like pivotal leadership exercises. So do one last rep. We're going to wrap it up. And we're going to let Mac go on vacation. Let's go. Come on, Mac. Walk on up. Pause. Can't go in, buddy. There we go. Courteous moment. Ah, nice. Great. Gentle leash pressure. Take your prong collar off. Stand back. Give him a second. Ah, it gives me a courteous moment. Fantastic. We're making good progress. Shut your crate. Boom. Go away. Don't make a lot of sound. Don't. Pookie, I'll be back soon. You're going to make your dog more nervous and more anxious. Just be proud of him quietly. Walk away. Do your thing. And come back a few hours later. Oh, there's my good boy. Don't do a big grand entrance. Same, same rules apply. Nice and low key. If he tries to charge out, I'm going to shut this. Grab your prong. Put your prong on. Do, 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 do. As soon as you put the prong and leash on, be prepared for your dog to associate that with movement most likely going to give you more challenge when you initially put that on. So, you put it on, you grab the leash, a lot of dogs, as soon as you grab the leash, will also start to charge out. So look for, look for, sorry, he's stepping on it. Nope. So look for all those moments, all those cues or keys to your dog where they're going to try and come out because, oh, the leash is on, we're moving, or, oh, the leash is in his hand, we're going to be coming out. And let those be moments where you challenge him to think. Don't just spoon feed him. Yeah, your leash is on, your prong's on, I've got this in my hand and I'm standing back and the crate door's open, but it doesn't mean anything until I tell you to come out, right? So now this guy's really thinking. It's really important stuff for him. Let's go. That's a quick one. All right, everybody, so that's the crate exercise. That's Mr. Mac. Hopefully you get the gist of what I'm talking about. Really important exercise. Do it right and be, and be really consistent with it and you'll find some really nice changes in your dog. So I'm Sean with The Good Dog. This is Mac. We'll see you guys soon. Take care.